Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this is the quick revision session for optical sources. In case of fiber optic cable, at input end, we have to use a suitable uh, source. It can be LED light emitting diode or a laser diode. And at the output end, the suitable detector is to be used, which converts the light rays back into the electrical form. So first we'll talk about the different semiconducting materials used for uh, optical sources. That means in case of LED as well as laser diodes. So first is gallium arsenide. So it is used in infrared LED and laser diode. Wavelength range is 850 to 940 nanometer. Second is gallium phosphide. It is used for yellow and green regions of the visible spectrum and wavelength range is 550 to 570 nanometers. Next is indium gallium nitride. It is for blue, green and white LEDs. Wavelength range is 400 to 550 nanometers. Next is aluminium gallium indium phosphide. It is for it is used for red and yellow LEDs and wavelength range is 590 to 650 nanometer. Next is indium phosphide. It is used for longer wavelength laser diode having the wavelength range 1300 to uh, 1550 nanometers. Then gallium indium arsenide phosphide. So it is used in case of various laser diodes uh, for generation of laser beams and wavelength range is 1200 to 1600 nanometer. Next part is types of semiconducting materials used for uh, laser sources like LED and laser diode. So from the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this, distinguish between direct and indirect band gap semiconducting material. First, let us talk about direct band gap semiconducting material. I have drawn two bands, upper is conduction band, lower band is valence band. Different electrons are there in the conduction band. This plus sign indicates different holes in the valence band. This is the portion of conduction band, bottom of the conduction band and top of the valence band, this part is top of the valence band, are at the same value of momentum. <clears throat> then when electron falls from conduction band to the valence band, it releases the photon. That means it gives out the energy. The value of that energy is H nu. H is Planck's constant. Nu is the frequency. So there is a direct transition uh, of falling electron from conduction band to the valence band. So these are the direct band gap semiconducting materials used for LED and laser diode. Next is indirect band gap semiconducting material. It is altogether different compared to the earlier case. Here, bottom of the conduction band and top of the valence band are not occurring at the same value of momentum. When electron falls, it attains certain intermediate position, intermediate uh, state, and after that it reaches to the valence band and gets uh, recombined with the hole. So time required is more compared to this uh, band gap material, but by adding impurities, you can reduce the time required for the recombination of electron and hole process. Next part is, what are the major requirements of good optical sources? So this is the list of major requirement. First is the emission wavelength of the optical source should be compatible with the loss spectrum of the glass optical fibers. Next is for higher data transmission, the modulation capability of the light source should be over 1 gigahertz. Then the spectral width of light source should be as narrow as possible in order to minimize the dispersion that is spreading of uh, out pulse. Then the radiance of light source should be as high as possible for this is required for effective coupling of a light source to the low numerical aperture fiber optic cable. Then source should be highly reliable and its, its cost should be low. Next part is light emitting diode. We'll discuss the working uh, of LED and its properties as well as some advantages and disadvantages. So this diagram shows the construction of LED, which is a light emitting diode. This is the symbol of LED. LED is basically a specially doped diode with suitable lens. As shown in this diagram, this is a PN junction, which is forward biased because this is the positive terminal of battery, which is connected to P side, negative is connected to N side. Naturally, positive terminal of battery uh, provides supply of holes negative terminal of battery provides supply of electrons. Here as shown in this diagram, recombination of electron and hole takes place. Whenever there is recombination of electron and holes, 
the energy is released out this this energy is called photon so light rays are emitted out you may treat it like this there are two energy levels one is higher energy level another is lower energy level this negative terminal of battery provides supply of electrons and these electrons gets combined with the holes near the depletion region so you may treat it like this electron falls from higher energy level to the lower energy level whenever it is doing so it radiates energy out this energy is h nu and it is the photon this is how basically the light emission takes place from the led now there are some useful properties of led because of which it is applicable in fiber optic communication so leds are compact and can be easily coupled to the to the fiber optic cable then the coupling efficiency is high low power consumption it is basically a low power consumption device and it is available in wide range of wavelengths so different colors uh, are available as far as this leds are concerned these are the important properties because of which leds are, are used as a light source in uh, foc that is fiber optic communication now advantages of led size is small and weight uh, low weight then lower operating temperature no complex driving circuitry is required whereas in case of other light sources complex driving circuitry is required then small switch on time they use high speed performance they are compatible with the integrated circuit linearity is high low cost and available in different colors that means different wavelengths are uh, different wavelength of lights can be produced so these are the advantages of led now disadvantages i have made a list of a uh, few major disadvantages so output power is affected by the temperature variation that means this device is temperature sensitive device then quantum efficiency is low quantum efficiency is basically the number of photons uh, ratio of number of photons that are emitted to the number of electrons that are injected inside the led then it gets damaged due to over voltage and over current next is quantum efficiency of led it is denoted by eta it is the ratio of number of photons emitted out to the number of electrons injected inside the led there are two types of quantum efficiencies one is eta int that is internal quantum efficiency it is tau upon tau r tau is total recombination lifetime which is tau r plus tau n r there are two types of phenomena one is radiative recombination another is non radiative recombination when electron falls from higher energy level to lower energy level and it gets it is getting recombined with the holes the photons are generated this is radiative recombination it may happen that the electron falls back but photons are not generated only heat is generated that is non radiative recombination so it internal quantum efficiency is tau that is total uh, recombination lifetime upon tau r radiative recombination lifetime external quantum efficiency is 1 upon n in, in the bracket n plus 1 bracket square n is the refractive index of a material used for the uh, manufacturing of uh, this led then quantum efficiency of led depends on the type or nature of the material used to manufacture the led then there is a change in refractive index whenever the light emits out from the led and enters into the air medium and it also depends on the angle made by the emitted photons the next part is laser laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this uh explain the basic steps required for the formation of laser beam or explain absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission in case of a laser diode so let us discuss all these things first is the absorption process in case of semiconductor material the general tendency of electrons is to stay at the lower energy level as shown in this diagram i have shown two energy levels e1 and e2 e1 is lower energy level e2 is higher energy level so for the simplicity we are considering only one electron as such uh, many electrons are there in the lower energy level so suppose we are considering one electron which is at the lower energy level e1 suppose an external photon is applied we have discussed the energy contained by the photon is given by h nu h is the planck's constant this notation is nu which is called the frequency so whenever this external photon is applied 
this electron which is in the lower energy level absorbs the energy because of increasing its energy this electron gets transferred to the higher energy level this is called the absorption process next is the spontaneous emission once the electron reaches to the higher energy level this electron stays there for certain time period no doubt this time period is very very small but it stays there for certain time period after that it continuously giving out or radiating the energy so after reduction in certain energy this electron falls back to its original position that means this electron which was uh, transferred to this higher energy level it too falls back to the lower energy level whenever electron causes transition that means whenever electron falls from higher to lower energy level it gives out the energy which was absorbed by it during this absorption process so this energy is given out when electron falls from e2 to e1 and this is termed as the photon so photons are generated next is the stimulated emission what i said in spontaneous emission certain time period is required for the electron to fall from e2 to e1 that is higher to lower energy level but before happening of this uh, incidence that means before completion of this time period if suppose we will apply external photon then this external photon strikes to this electron which is at the higher energy level because of this striking a uh, photon striking external photon this electron leaves its position and falls back to the lower energy level we know that whenever electron falls from higher to lower energy level it gives out photon so this one photon is generated now this incident photon which strikes to this electron which is in the higher energy level comes out as it is that means we can easily say due to application of one incident photon two photons are generated so this is the amplification action likewise the laser beam is created as i said for the simplicity we are talking about only one electron but there are many electron uh, creating this amplification so this is the basic operation of the laser beam next important part is comparison between led and laser diode so this chart gives the comparison between the two output power in case of led is low for laser it is high then spectral width of laser is broad because we know that in case of a uh, sorry in case of led the light is getting spread so the spectrum width is broad which is around 25 nanometer to 100 nanometer in case of laser we are getting a fine spot so spectral width is narrow it is 0.01 nanometer to 5 nanometer the coupled power in case of led is low for laser it is high then conversion efficiency for led is 10 to 20 percent that is low and in case of laser it is 30 percent to 70 percent that is high the speed of operation is low because of spreading of uh, light rays in case of led while in case of laser the speed of operation is high so this is about the comparison between led and laser so dear students that's it for this quick revision session thank you thanks a lot for watching this video